Here is a blue ink by Noodler's X Feather Blue. Let's jump straight to the end with my opinion on this ink. The paper I'm using here is a Moramon Nemesine notebook. I had seen some good things about this ink and was excited to try it. I wouldn't mind a bottle of it now, that's for sure. It performs as well as the X Feather Black, but blue. There is a little bit of tone variation by nib and even a little bit of shading from time to time. Sure, the there's better blue tones out there, though this is pretty good. But the feature of this is the anti-feather quality. For that, it is perfect on a bunch of non-fountain pen friendly papers and should be a part of the supply list for every student or anyone forced to write on 20 pounds copy paper. The pen for today is a Nemesign Singularity. All of the writing samples are done with a Retro 51 P51 with an extra fine nib, a Retro 51 Corsair with a medium nib, a Retro 51 Lincoln with a 1.1 stub. Now that we know my opinion on this ink, let's see how I got there starting with the first writing sample done on Claire Fontaine. Looking at the extra fine nib, we get a nice enough blue. It's not the best blue, but it's nice enough. With no feathering, with no spread, with no shading, it's just there and doing exactly what it's supposed to. Now, I'd be surprised if it did feather on this paper. It doesn't really feather almost any ink. Looking at the medium nib, it is the same tone as the extra fine. It has no feathering. It is an X feather after all. It has no spread. It has a few moments of shading that you can find, like growth on the second line where the H is darker than the rest of the word, or this on the third line where the H is darker than the rest of the word. Same with accursed where the D is darker. There's some shading showing up. Looking at the stub nib, it is just a little bit darker than it was with the medium. There is no feathering and there is no spread. There is some shading true and see it. I said true. I don't know why it's tree and see, but I'm trying to figure out sometimes whatever. Tree and C, all the shading. Look at tree and C on the first line where the top of the T is lighter than the bottom of the T, that loop. It lightens up into the R and gets very dark into the E, E. Now, and starts lighter, gets very dark at the D and see how the C starts lighter and gets darker at the two E's. Looking at the back of the page, we get no bleeding and no ghosting. Like most inks, this one comes in a bottle. This is how the Pilot Custom 823 fits. And here is the Pelican M1000. Here is the ink level when you can no longer fill a Lamy Safari. There is approximately 7 milliliters of ink left. The next writing sample is done in a Portage Reporter's Notebook. <laughs> Looking at the extra fine nib, it is the same tone as the Claire Fontaine. We get no feathering, yes. We get no spread, yes. We get no shading. All right, well, you know, it's not really, it's not called super feather or super shading blue. It's called X feather, and it's doing that really well. It's performing just so, so good. Looking at the medium nib, it is the same tone as the extra fine, the same tone as the Claire Fontaine. We get no feathering and we get no spread. We get a couple of moments that are a little bit darker for some shading, though it's not really shading very well. If you look at climber, you see at the top, the B is a little bit darker than the rest of the word or get on the third line where T is a little bit darker than the GE. Looking at the stub nib, it is a little bit darker than the medium. 
we get no feathering and we get no spread. It's the same tone as the Claire Fontaine. We do see some shading like and so on the first line where and is a little bit darker than so. Highest starts lighter, does get a little bit darker at the est at the end, but for the most part, not much for shading going on here. Looking at the back of the page, we have no bleeding and no ghosting. There's a lot to learn by doing multiple chromatographies. The one on the left is immediately put into water for 10 to 15 seconds. The one on the right, marked with a D, is let dry for 10 minutes before putting it into water. The next writing sample is done on a national brand steno notebook. Looking at the extra fine nib, it is the same tone as the Claire Fontaine, showing this to be a very opaque ink, not being changed at all by this paper, with no feathering, with no spread, with no shading, just a solid performance the whole way through. Looking at the medium nib, it is the same tone as the extra fine, the same tone as the Claire Fontaine. Still no feathering, still no spread, still no shading, still a very good performing blue on this paper. Looking at the stub nib, it is darker than it was with the medium, darker than it was on the Claire Fontaine. We get no feathering. We get no spread. We do get some moments of shading. I mean, you can see it on greened in the second line where the GR is a little bit lighter than the EE and the N lightens up a little bit till the ED at the end that does get a bit darker and right next to that does start a little bit lighter than the D. Now with that, it's mostly a darker tone and you have to look for the shading to really see it. Looking at the back of the page, no bleeding, no ghosting, still great performance. Resistance tests are done to see how this ink can be expected to perform on the page. And more importantly, how hard it may be to clean from your pen. The smear is allowed to dry for three days before testing it. The highlighter is on the top left. Pen flush is on the top right. One third bleach solution is on the bottom left. And water is on the bottom right. The next writing sample is done in a Rhodia notebook. Looking at the extra fine nib, it is the same tone as the Claire Fontaine. We get no feathering and we get no spread. We do get a couple of moments of shading that slip by when you look at slip on the first line where the S is a little bit lighter than the L. It lightens up into the I, slightly darker at the PPED at the end. But that's really the most for shading that we're getting. For the most part, we'll call shading dreadful, like dreadful on the third line, where you see really a uniform tone, good blue on the page, just uniform, mostly without shading. Looking at the medium nib, it is the same tone as the extra fine, the same tone as the Claire Fontaine. We get no feathering and we get no spread. We get some convenient moments of shading when we look at convenient on the first line, where the C is a little bit darker than the Envine, but the I E does darken a little bit. The N lightens some and the T does get a bit darker. It shades not as well as it did on the Claire Fontaine, but it definitely does have it. Looking at the stub nib, it is darker than it was with the medium, the same tone as the Claire Fontaine. We get no feathering, we get no spread, we get almost nothing for shading, really just the dark tone the whole way through. If you look at how on the first line and down directly underneath that or down, you see that how is just a little bit darker than down. How, I don't know. Looking at the back of the page, there's no bleeding and there's no ghosting. 
With over a thousand inks reviewed, let's take a look at some color comparables. Here is Noodler's Blue. Here is Noodler's La Couleur Royale. Here is Noodler's Blue Eel. Here is Noodler's Liberty's Elysium. The next writing sample is done in a composition lab notebook. Looking at the extra fine nib, it is a little bit darker than it was on the Claire Fontaine. We get no feathering, we get no spread, we get no shading, just a nice dark blue. And its resistance is really gonna make this a great ink for students to use on this paper, especially if they're using it in a lab-like environment. Looking at the medium nib, it is the same tone as the extra fine, the same tone as the Claire Fontaine. We get no feathering and we get no spread. We also get no shading, which it did have on the Claire Fontaine, doesn't here. Still makes this an excellent candidate for students to use because, man, this is really good. And it's as if this was really made to help in these environments, like crappy paper, perhaps calling it X feather to avoid feathering. Looking at the stub nib, it is darker than it was with the medium, a little bit lighter than it was on the Claire Fontaine. We get no feathering and we get no spread. Don't blink or you might miss some of the shading shining through. Take a look at blink. That is quite a bit darker on the first line than and underneath it. Now, even within the blink, the BL is darker than the IN and the K is very dark. Shining on the first line, the S is a little bit lighter than the H. The ining is lighter than even the S while it is shading, while underneath shining, the W is lighter. The H darkens up just a little bit and the ITE is very dark. Looking at the back of the page, we have no problem with bleeding, no problem with ghosting, making this an excellent ink for students to use with this paper. While it's nice to see ink in the same color family, I prefer to find an ink that complements its color on the page. Here is a pink ink by Sailor Pesh. Here is an orange ink by KWZ Orange. Here is a magenta ink by Diatramentis Document Fuchsia. Here is a yellow ink by Califolio Horidori. The last writing sample is done on 20 pound copy paper. Looking at the extra fine nib and the paper we've all been waiting for with this ink. It's the exact same tone as it was on the Claire Fontaine. There is no feathering. Yes, there is no spread. Double yes, there is no shading. Well, you know, it's copy paper. Really just a wow performance and not really a surprise based on Noodlers did such a good job with the X feather black. The blue is just as good. Looking at the medium nib, it is the same tone as the extra fine, the same tone as the Claire Fontaine. There is no feathering. There is no spread. There is amazingly great performance from this ink. Again, not a surprise, but still always wow there's no shading and that's okay still what a winner on this paper
looking at the stub nib. It is darker than it was with the medium, the same tone as the Clairefontaine. There is no feathering and no spread making this right now. All we have to do is be able to see the back of the page to know how awesome this ink really is is there is moments of shading that are going on but not huge like dark on the first line is a little bit lighter or sorry darker than any underneath it now any underneath it starts a little bit lighter on the an but the y does get a little bit darker looking at the back of the page holy guacamole the i mean you could write back here with this ink. You could use both sides of 20 pound copy paper with a darker ink. That just makes it amazing. Yes, there's a couple spots where you do see it getting deeper into the page. Nothing came through touching the page underneath. This is a huge winner, winner chicken dinner. So what nib and pen do I think are gonna give the best writing experience with this ink? The paper I'm using here is yellow Rhodia paper. I'm really looking forward to my chicken parm dinner, if you can't tell. The extra fine and the medium gave the same tone throughout, and the medium did offer just a little bit more shading. Now, the stub was a little darker and shaded the best, but this ink is not about shading. It is about straight up performance on crappy paper. This does it well from any pen on any paper because of the specific marketing of this ink it is a dealer's choice no doubt now get out there and learn something new using some of that 20 pound copy paper without fear this is the end and thanks for watching